Hi again, welcome to another video, and today we're working on a Tanaka hedge trimmer. It's a THT210S, and it's an on-runner. So I'm going to go through my normal checks with it. I'm going to check the piston first, take the exhaust and check the piston and make sure everything's good with that. And then I'm going to clean the carburetor out, put a new diaphragm and gasket in it, give the saw a clean up. It might need fuel lines and that, and I'll just go all through it. And hopefully it's it's a good one. I'll also I'll check for spark as well. But before I get on to that, if this is the first time you've been to my channel, please like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow. Uh, that'd be much appreciated. And yeah, we might as well get onto this um, hedge trimmer and see if we can fix it. Hopefully it's just the run of the mill things I normally do, just checking it over and then doing the carburetor and everything will be good, but we'll see. So we'll get onto that now. So here we have the hedge cutter on the bench. Um, it's a uh, Tanaka THT210S. Um, and I did try and pull this when I got it, I think, uh, but it didn't, didn't want to know, didn't want to start. So I'm going to do my usual checks. I'm going to check the piston because this machine will probably be sold, but I want to make sure that everything is um, all good with it. I have just noticed, and I would turn you around a little bit, it's not really that important, but one of them has broken off. But I'm not really too too fussed about that. Um, it's a second-hand hedge trimmer, but the blades are pretty sharp on this one. A bit loose, though. But, um, yeah, I'm not worried about that side of it so much. I'm more concerned in getting it running. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, ch I'll um, test the spark. I'll check in the exhaust side. I'll check in the carburetor side. Probably just do the diaphragm and gasket on it anyway um might actually have one that will fit now because i've bought a few lately and they might be the right ones we shall see when we've got it apart um if not i'll go unordered uh the cut housing probably okay i would imagine um but who knows i haven't started it but generally they are okay and as it doesn't start that's probably the reason it was um given up on so yeah first thing i'm going to do is turn it around and get the exhaust off for a start and then we'll we'll go from there well firstly i've got to move this exhaust guard and it's just a little like, bolt under there there's still something else under there it's holding it on so the last exhaust guard bolt is right underneath there what i'm going to do to make the whole lot easier so i can work on it much easier i'm going to take the engine off of the the gearbox it's going to be easier that way should have done that in the first place because it's quite a long blade on this one I'm sure how long it is but it's quite a long blade so and yeah i'll get that out of the way and then i can work on the engine separately be, be much easier so i've had to do some off camera because the blade is just too long it's just awkward on the bench so um i'll show you what i've done anyway um i've took the engine off you can see the engine there separated now um, i had to take the throttle cable off and a couple of wires um to do with the stop um and at least i can see now that it all turns over okay so the gearbox side of things should be good so i don't really have to worry too much about that apart from giving it a the clean round there should be all good so i'm just going to put that on the floor now so then i can just work on the small engine and it'll have much more room so all i've done is took the air filter cover off with that one screw because i needed to get to take the throttle cable out which is there and then two wires went onto there and um yeah i think that was all on that oh yeah and this the the bolts hold underneath. Two of them are just normal nuts, and there's two Allen key bolts like that. So that was all easy enough. Um, and now you can see I can get to that very easy. So I just um, unscrew that last screw that holds the exhaust cover on. I might have to take the spark plug out as well, which. Uh, I don't know if it comes off, but I would have to take that out anyway. So I'll just put that cover to the side. Um, I can do the exhaust now. So now I'm going to get the Allen key um, into the exhaust bolts, which actually already undid easy. Yep, yeah, they were nice and easy to undo. So let's get this off. And then this is always the part which makes you decide whether to repair it or not, really. 
because I wouldn't put a new pot and piston in this machine. Um, I would just probably pile it out for spares. But pretty black and oily in there, so it looks like it's had oil in the fuel. So that actually is a good sign sometimes when it is all black and a bit oily. So we get that off. And then we can, a moment of truth. And yeah, it looks like I'm in luck again. That was a very light scoring on there, but I'm happy with that. I think that's all good. Let's see if we can see over the other side. Can a bit, see it's nice and shiny. So I will take the carb off the other side. Have a look in there as well. Just get in position there. It's gone very oily and, oh, actually might wash out, might wash out. Uh, that's not really that important at the moment anyway. I've got much more to look at on this before we get to th that stage. One there. And this is all the holds the carburetor on, I believe. I shall... The fuel line is a bit leaky. And actually, the grommet doesn't look great, but it might just be the line that wasn't very good. It's a 2008 model, actually. You can see it. On there, it's 2008. So it's a little bit newer than the other Tanaka ones I've worked on, but probably not much. I rate these, I find them alright, these little edge cutters. Personally, I'll class them up there with, with the sort of steel and that. And um, Echo, I think they're good. I've owned a few over the years, I've never found a problem with them at all, and they, they take the hard work. Uh, that has come out of the tank, that one. That is horrible, that. It's all a bit horrible, to be honest. Pipes do not look great. Um, I'm going to leave that all together at the moment, because we'll have a little look at that soon. That gasket is horrible there as well, so I hope I've got a replacement one of them. Uh, Parts are very similar to other ones on these sort of things. There is other machines that are quite similar. So sometimes the gaskets and that will fit like an Echo gasket may fit. We'll see, we'll see. I've got some spare stuff in the drawer. Look in there. Got no problem in there. It's all good. So we know the actual internals of the engine are going to be okay. I'm pretty confident they're going to be okay. Good compression as well. Um, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just check for spark. So I'm going to take the spark plug out and we can do that. You just saw me take that out and that is a brand new spark plug. You can see it's hardly done any work at all. So that will be going back in. And, but actually we need to see if it's got spark first, don't we? So let's go back in there right now at the moment. Try and get an angle and I'll try to show you. I think it's always nice to see a spark. Yep, we've got no problem there. It's got a spark, so it's all looking pretty good at the moment, this machine. So now I'm gonna get this carve apart. Um, it's all together still at the moment with the air filter housing on air spill. So I'll just pull that off all in one. So I know where all the choke bits and that goes. Put back together, still got the fuel line in there, which is going to the primer bulb. So just take a note of which one that was. Um, actually, what I'm going to do at the moment is just snip that. So I get out of the way. There we go. Just put that to the side. Got a carb there. I'm hoping I have got a diaphragm for this. It's a bit mucky, the carb. Um, I'm just going to peel gasket off and I could probably use that again. I'll just dry that off a bit. Looks in good condition, it's just a bit oil soaked, so I think that'll be okay. I'll probably use that again. And now we've got the carb there. So now I'm going to just get this apart. There's four screws on there. So I'll just do that. Now we'll just um, 
separate it. Bit of muck on there. Ah, there we go. So I have just peeled the gasket off. Loose now, and that's what we have underneath. Nice and simple. Um, I'll see if I've got one of them. If I have, I can get this cardboard cleaned up and back together quick, and then we can try it on the on the engine and see if it starts. We have got the bit below. I'm sure, I bought uh, quite a few of these um, diaphragm kits for these type. That has got to be. Yeah, it's quite loose. Ugh, didn't realize there'd be so much petrol in there. And we've got that bit like that. So yeah, that all needs a good clean out. I'll just it's on there like that. The gasket is underneath. And then we have that. on top like that so yeah the gasket goes a bottom on them rib bits if you see them where them little lines are so yeah we'll get that off as well and yeah i'm gonna get that sorted in a minute and cleaned and hopefully i've got a set like i said so get this back together quick i will just take that out as well as we'll do that now so it's petrol it actually smells like it could have um some like aspen in it hasn't got the strong petrol smell I've got people who are running on this um, sort of pre-mixed stuff now. I don't. I can't afford it. <laughs> it's not cheap. Oh, I've got to just undo that. Uh, just remember that's roughly like that, rather than me screwing it all the way in and out. It's only the tick over anyway. Or shall we screw it? Let's, let's screw it all the way in and and do it properly. So that is half one, half two, half three, half four, half five, half six, half seven so seven seven uh, seven turns out from when it's all the way in yeah and just make a point of where that fitted in because it can fit in two ways so we'll look at it like that and we'll go by actually go by that screw that screw is opposite the wall row there. We should know by that. Just finish unscrewing that, taking that out. Should put that out now. Usually come undone is pretty easy. It can come out easy. Yep, which it has. So that's another bit of just have a quick clean, clean up. Yeah, it isn't. It don't look bad, but. It can all have a good clean and then we should be good to go. Um, I'll just take this um, little needle valve out now. I'll just take a little screw and get that out. Like I always say, watch that spring. Yeah, to tip that out, the spring is actually still in there. So we've got them bits there. Put them to the side. I'm just going to spray this uh, through with some carb cleaner off camera because I'm going to do it just outside the door. Um, so I don't have the smell of the carb spray in here. So I'm going to give that a spray out and a blow down the airline. It's pretty straightforward. Just go for all the holes and make sure everything's clear. There's the gauze on there, which I'm going to check. I might not take that out if it if it looks good because they never quite go back in the same. Um, if you take them out, if you've got a new one, it's okay. But I haven't got a new one. I don't believe. No, not in that set. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. And then we've got that sort of carb body. I'll do the same with that. And yeah, I'll be back with you when it's all nice and clean and we'll fit it back together. So 
maybe just it'll just be this stuff I'm using this um, carb spray here we go and I'll just spray that through and then just use the airline just to um, make sure well, and to dry it off as well just to make sure there isn't anything stuck in any of the little holes so yeah leave it with me so now the bits are clean I'm gonna start with this bit first and I'm gonna get this piece back in so what do we say that was opposite to the wall bro wall goes there so we know it goes in there like so so it's just them two screws to put in and the six I've took out these are the shorter two okay, so let's get this needle valve back in I'm just gonna balance that in there which I haven't done um try to do it playing around with carb spray and it's cooler tonight colder and my hands are a little bit cold um so I've got that in balanced in there as you can see right there um so I'll get a pin through make sure the screw is within um grabbing distance I've done it before and I had to go over the other side of the shit and try and hold it in place while I'm doing it before let's get this in here all in one which I've done it so now I've got to get a screw in just hold that in there sorry about my hands but you'll see it in there right there Get that screwed in. So we've got all that lot in there. Yep, that's all done and tight. Let's check that. Let's go around there. Just see that spring's in there. It's in there, all in place. It's not going to come out. It's where it should be. So I'm happy with that. So now we can bring this part of the car back in. The bit with the black bit I bolted on where the throttle mechanism works um, I thought we laid them in place just to check they were right there's a gasket first then there's that piece over there this one's nice to do because it's got actually they've all got little tabs on to hold the gaskets and that in place one there and one there and yeah makes it much easier so there'll be this bit on top next I can see exactly where that's got to go because there's that little bit there goes in there so put that on because because oh, of them tabs it's gone nicely into place then we have the gasket again actually the diaphragm on top there I'll just take that off for a second then we have the gasket on there and then we have the diaphragm on top of there, if I can grab it. And then we have that little final plate that screws on. And we said about the hole there, the hole goes to that little dot in there. You can see that little dot. Show you. That was my reference point, that little dot there. Not sure it matters where that little hole goes, but it's nice to put it back in where it actually come from. Then we've got the four screws. Oh. So that's another refurb carburetor. It's been cleaned. Have the new diaphragm gaskets in there and everything should be all good with that so yeah that's all done i have left that um mentioned earlier i left a little bit of pipe on just so i knew which one went to wear on the primer um but yeah that's all done so that could just be put to the side while i clean everything else up on the machine and then i can get that back on and i know the carb should be good it's the kit i used for it and it's a genuine one So you will have just seen me put the 
exhaust back on. I'm just going to put this um, exhaust guard back on now. It just sort of wraps around the engine. And just check it's all in place there. It does uh, snagged up on the wires a little bit. And that can go a little bit tricky. Nearly, it's just a bit of the gasket has got has got caught up. Ah, there we go. It's all in place now. So there's one screw, a little bolt under there. If you remember, that's why I took the engine off. A bit make everything much easier anyway. These four bolts, like I said, to get the engine off. Got two bolts and the two nuts there. It much more easily to handle. One there, and then there's one right on the top there. I'll just put that, hold the engine up to do that one. Have a look to see how good the recoil rope is on it. I will check. I pulled it over, didn't I? So the spark, so I just check that. Yep, pretty decent. I won't mess with that. Um, so what have I got to do on this now? Uh, well, all the engine is actually clean. I've got to actually pull the, the filter out. I haven't took it off yet, but I pulled it out. So might be okay but i will see if i've got a new one to put on there i'd like to put a new one on there i'm gonna put new fuel lines because they are not good uh i've done the carb as we saw before that is all clean and ready to go so that's good um but i don't want to put that on until i've done the fuel lines it's just easier to get around there uh this needs um cleaning up the air filter housing so i'll do that i'll do that off camera and then I think we'll be about there to try it on the back on the gearbox blade side of things and then see if it if it works. So now I've got it all cleaned up, I'm gonna put some new fuel line in it. So I'm gonna just um pull that off. Just see it there, the fuel fuel filter. Just put that to the side because I may use it again. Ideally I'd like to replace it, but I'm not sure I've got one. So then I'm just gonna Pull this out of the tank. Might have to pull that that way, yeah. So now I've got that out, I'm just going to measure it with this new piece. I'll go fractionally longer, but not much. So got that um it did have one of them on the end to clamp the filter on but i'm not gonna bother using that because it's gonna go on that pipe very tight anyway so that's our job now get that through there if i can don't want to cut a point on it but i might have to just to I think i'm gonna have to cut a little point on it just to guide it through as I put a little bit extra on it, it's all right because I can just cut this level at the end. See a little point on it now. It's still becoming a little bit difficult. Yeah, it went in but didn't actually go in very well. Uh, I don't like taking grommets out because they don't always go back in the same. And it didn't leak, not from the grommet. But then again, I think we can do it. There we go. The grommet's out. So I'm just now going to push that straight through. There, like so. Still doesn't want to go because it's a lot thicker. But if I get a thicker pipe in there, it actually helps hold it into place better. See, I'm nearly through. Just now. Just 
Okay, that's how it's done. Yep, we're done. Oh, that didn't want to go in there. Just hold that in place. It might be easier like that. It must have gone like that. So, yeah, that'll sort of be right. Only problem is, they're not so flexible, these ones, but still, um, it'd probably be good enough. Um, see if we can get that back in there, but I'm going to actually cut that end off first. It's taking a bit longer, this bit, than I thought it was going to. This is why I don't like pulling the grommets out, because I'm going to have to just aid it in with a screwdriver now, and I don't like doing that. But if I'm careful, that should be good. I think it's it's gone in, so that should be okay. I still have got to put the filter on the end of that, but I can grab that afterwards. So now I've got to replace these other two pipes. They are pretty horrible on there, but I want to get this old... Um, primer bulb out i've got to reuse it but i want to get it out so it's easier to put the pipes on so just bear with me a second i'll try to just lever that clip out there we go one side's done and the other side yeah it comes out like that so now i've got this primer bulb out the two pipes are still on it that one is the one that goes back the return into the tank that is the one that joins onto the carburetor. I've still got the other little bit on there. So firstly, I'm going to cut a length of pipe just a tiny bit longer than that and push it in the tank first. So that will be done. So I'll just get that cut now and then I'll be back with you. So I've cut that. Much like the other one, I've got to try and get it through that hole there. So the grommet's going to have to come out. I keep messing about like this. Actually, it might be better to push it inwards. So that's in there. Dip it out. It's out now. There we go. So what I can do now, I can, which bit was it? And comfortably put that through should go through okay now actually so i say easy it's much like the other one the thing is is i wanted it to be a tight fit and that just means it's gonna be harder to get through I sped that through because I didn't want to get bored of that. It took it took ages to get that through there, but you can see it's such a tight fit now, so um, it should be good. Um, if I do it like that, I'm going to have to try and get this grommet back in again without doing any damage. So I'm not sure how much of that you saw, uh, I sped it through, but that was quite hard to get in, but it's they're so tight now, so they shouldn't leak. That's why I wanted to go with the wider the wider pipe. Uh, all we've got now so is the one on here. So that's got to be that joined together. Um, I want to keep that one on there still, because I know which one it goes on to then, because one's longer than the other. So let me just measure that up. That's about right, actually. I didn't have to cut that at all. So what I'll do is just pull that one off there. Put that on there, which it goes on pretty tight. So I'll um, now get the card back on. Actually, that needs to be turned around the other way a bit. So yeah, I've turned that around now. That should be much better. Um, so we've got that. We uh, I'll try and remember now that top one goes on there, so I'll 
try and show you. I've got my hands away. It's going to be a tight fit on there though. So yeah, we've got to start. Oh, I thought we got to start. Yep, I think that's fine. So, let's get this back on now. Uh, them two pipes have got to go through that hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this cover back on, or air filter housing. Uh, that's how it went. I think I showed you that before. We'll get them in there. There we go. And then if I could, I nearly forgot the gasket. I did clean up that gasket, so that's all okay. I'm gonna use that again. That'll be fine. I don't know the way around it goes. I think it must be like that. It's all right, it's just a bit oily that gasket was, but I'll give it a clean off and it'll it will go again. Let's get that started. Don't care if it don't go all the way in at the moment because I've got to get them. Should be going in okay. Yeah, it's biting now. The bottom one is as well. You know, right, I'm just going to now put these pipes through there if I can get them through. There we go. I remember which one goes somewhere now. I think I do remember. They are not playing ball. There you go. They're in place. Um, I've got this primer bulb now. So the one that goes to the carburetor, which is that one, will go on the shorter one. So let's just pull that off. So the shorter one is there. So we've got that one. We go. I should do the other one first because the pipe's a bit shorter on that one. So it's easier. I'm gonna have to just hold that. Whether it's just a way I've done this one or um whether it just is more awkward because it just seems to be. Perhaps it's just me, I've had a busy day. Get that in, we are near there now. So we've got them in place. Now I'm going to push this primer bulb in. I've been fighting with it a few, well, for a few minutes, and I realised there was a certain way around it went. I think. <laughs> Is it that way? There we go, that's clicked in nicely now. So I've just tightened them two um, screws up to hold the carb on. So everything should be okay. I haven't put the filter back in yet. So now I'm gonna hook that bit of pipe out, the longer one, if I can. Might have to my trampoline spring tool. Yep, there we go. be quite a tight fit that is as well that um yellow fuel line is thicker on the outside but the inside is pretty pretty narrow as you can see i'm struggling to get that on can always get some boiling water and put it in some boiling water to expand it don't want to have to do that unless I really, really have to. I nearly got started then. It's on. Um, but it's on now and I ain't gonna fall off. So I'll just ping that in the tank, that's done. Put the fuel cap back in. 
So we've done that. Um, I haven't cleaned the filter out yet, so I can do that soon. And now I'm just going to double check the, the choke functions as it should. And it does. So, so that should all be good. Hopefully it don't leak from them grommets. You can see there that everything is all new and should be good. So I'm going to get this back on the actual... Um, gearbox side of things and everything that's all cleaned as well i will re-grease it and that but i just want to get that connected on then i can do the throttle cable and the stop as well so that will be done and then yeah we should be able to try it then i think so now we've got the gearbox part on you can see it's all clean around there this is the blades and handling gearbox and everything and that's where the clutch goes in uh you won't be able to see a lot on here because it's just a couple of bolts like I showed you before. So one nut goes on there. If I can start it. And one nut will go the same place on the other side. But then we have... I've got to find the right one for this. It's all holding it in place at the moment anyway with that one. Then we've got the Allen bolt. And then you just you can go up from underneath to do that. There's a hole in the in the handle part. You can see it going in now. So I'll just show you me doing this side. I'll do the other side off camera because it's exactly the same. Yep, that one's all tight. I'll tighten the other one now. A little there, just a 10 mil nut. So yeah, I'll just do the other side of them and then they'll all be back together. Actually, while I'm here, before I go on, I might as well these i'm not actually sure which one uh was which on this so i think it doesn't matter but because i think it's just for the switch but we'll test i'll test it for spark probably off camera i'll test it for spark just to make sure everything's right with that and i might as well do this throttle cable now if i can find where, where to put it there's a hole at the bottom hole at the bottom under there which is that cable goes through like so turn it around you might better see so we've got this throttle cable back in if you can see there that's the end of the cable and there's a little piece on the throttle where it um on the carb where it locates into it's a little bit tricky because you've got to try and get it into place at the same time as you push the throttle down like so, but I've nearly done it. It's in place. And on this one, there actually was a little cap to hold it in place. I'm not quite sure how that goes on now. Um, yeah, like that, because uh, that bit, the cable goes through. So let's see if we can just get, as it was on, I never usually see these on them, but as it was on there, put it back on. Seems to be in place there now. So that should work and it does. So it's all, all good. So we're back together now, apart from them two bolts I'm gonna do off camera. Then the next time you'll see me, we'll be start up and we'll give it a go and see, well, hopefully start up and we'll give it a go and see if it starts up. Can't see any reason it won't. So now we have this Tanaka outside. So I'm just gonna fire it up and see what it starts like. It'll be a cold start. And we'll see what it runs like. I've got the on and um, choke, prime it. I think I've primed pretty well. More. Uh,
So there we go. It's fixed, it runs nice, it revs out nice. Quite a nice hedge trim. Yeah, nice hedge trimmer that is. So that's another one done. And yeah, um, pleased with that one. Have a good result. And go on to the next one now, whatever that may be. So yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.